Hello students, in this video we'll discuss the adjacency matrix that corresponds to a graph. Let's be given a graph G, and then of course G is a what? It's a collection of vertices and a collection of edges, okay? So these are vertices and edges. And of course, edges are unordered pairs of vertices, recall that edges are unordered unordered pairs of vertices. Okay? And since they're pairs, this allows me to construct a matrix. Remember, a matrix is a row and a column assignment, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to define define the adjacency matrix of G to be adjacency of G is the matrix that has entries A, I, J, where I and J go from 1 up to N. We're here, the set of vertices where there are N vertices. And how do I make this assignment? We say that A I J, I J is equal to one if there is an, an edge, if there is an edge from V I to V J, or since they're unordered or vice versa, right? Okay, and then A I J is equal to zero if uh, else, basically, right? So in other words, if there's no edge between the two of those things, right? So it's zero otherwise. Okay, and so the adjacency matrix has a whole bunch of zeros and ones in it, right? So A adds G, hence adjacency matrix of G is a whole bunch of zeros and one, and if I, if I transpose it, right, what do I know? I know there's an edge between I and J, there's also an edge between J and I since they're unordered. So the transpose of this thing is equal to the adjacency matrix of G, and that says that it's a symmetric matrix. So add G, it's a, it's a metric matrix. And we're gonna leverage this fact a lot because symmetric matrices, as we know, have real eigenvalues, right? And so the real eigenvalues are gonna tell us a tremendous amount of information about the graph itself, okay? That's our discussion of spectral graph theory. So let me give you an example of adjacent matrix, then we'll prove the theorem, right? So here's our example. So let's draw one, two, there's V1, there's V2, there's V3, there's V4, and there's V5. I'm gonna do this, one, two, three. So we can go over here, over here, and then V5 is gonna go, let's just leave V5 over here hanging. V4 is gonna go over here. And if that's my graph over here, so I have V1, V2, V3, V4, and V5, so what are our adjacency matrix of this graph? So this is my graph over here, G. So the adjacency matrix of G is gonna be one. Let's see, where does one connect? Does one connect to one? There's not a loop at one, so one does not connect to one, so I put a zero there. Does one connect to two? Yes, one connects to two. Does one connect to three? Yes, one connects to three. Does one connect to four? Yes, one connects to four. Does one connect to five? Is there an edge between one and five? There's not an edge between one and five, so that gets a zero. Then what if I do two? Does two connect to one? Yes. Does two connect to itself? No, it does not, because there's no loop at two. Does two connect to three? No, it does not. Does two connect to four? Yes, it does. Does two connect to five? Yes, it does. What about three? Does three connect to itself? No. So does three connect to one? Yes. Does three connect to two? No. Does, is there an edge from three to three? No, there's no loop there. Does three connect to four? Yes. Does three connect to five with an edge? No. Does four connect to one? Yes. Does four connect to two? Yes. Does four connect to three? Yes. Does four connect to itself? No. Does four connect to five? No. Let's give ourselves a little more room down over here in our adjacency matrix. Finally, let's do five, right? Does five connect to one? No. Does five connect to two? Yes. Does five connect to three? No. Does five connect to four? Nope. Does five connect to itself? No. So here's our matrix over here, right? And so again, notice that there, it's a completely symmetric matrix. So if I look over here, this number one over here 
is there a number one over here? Since there's a number one over here, there's a number one over here. This is the what. Now let's look at this, this entry over here. So if I look at the second row, fourth column, and I look at the second column, fourth row, those numbers are the same. So that we can clearly see from this example that this adjacency matrix over here, so this adjacency matrix over G, in this particular instance is clearly adjacency of G transpose. It's clearly symmetric, right? And so the symmetric property of this adjacency matrix is very, very important. And so now let's, let's discuss what will happen. There's also another very important property of these adjacency matrices that when you raise them to a power, you get the number of paths from one vertex to another, right? So here's our next theorem. Our theorem is the following. Theorem. If I look at adjacency matrix, adjacency matrix of a graph G, and I raise that matrix to the power N, then the ij entry of this, look at the ij entry of this, and the power of this matrix over here gives the number of paths from i to j of length n. So for example, in this graph, if I want a, if I, if I just look at the JSON matrix, to go from V1 to V2 over here, there's one path of length one, and edge is one unit of length in this, in this, in this context. So go from V1 to V2, there's an edge between those two vertices, so there's a path of length one. That gives me a one over here in my JSON matrix. That counts the number of paths there are, okay? If I wanted to go from V1 to V2 in two steps, I could do what? I could go from V1 to V4 and then V4 to V2. That would be a path that required what? That required two steps over here, right? So of course the proof is by induction, so the proof goes as follows. So proof by induction. When n's equal to one, this is trivial, right? Because paths of length one are edges And that's what the adjacency matrix stores. Now, if I looked at, if I assume it's true for n, assume true for all levels up to, um, yeah, for n equal one, for k equal n, okay? And then let's consider the adjacency matrix. So let's call adjacency matrix of G to the power N, let's call that B. Then by assumption Bij, then Bij, the enters of B, is the number of N paths from I to J. Okay, great. And now what's B times the adjacency matrix of G, what's the IJ entry of that matrix product over here? Well, it's gonna be the sum over K. K goes from one up to M, where M is the number of vertices here, right? So if you have M vertices in this, in this formula. Okay, then I'll have what? Then I'll have B, I, K, and then adjacency matrix of G from K to J. And now we're done. Let's think about why. Because this over here is the number of N paths from I to K, and then this is the number of edges from K to J. So how can you make a path of length N plus one from I to J? You first have to make a path from I up to any other vertex in the graph, and then you have to connect that other vertex, that vertex I to K, that K has to then take one more step going from N steps to N plus one steps of what? To, from going from K to J, right? So this is the number of paths from I to J of length n plus one, and that proves the induction, right? So in other words, if I look at the nth power of the adjacency matrix of a graph, that's going to exactly count the number of n paths where a step in the path corresponds to an edge going from vertex i to vertex j. Thank you very much.